This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This week's episode of Do Go On is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. Visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash go for a full month of unlimited access. Uh, a bit too smooth for me that, Dave. For one month of limited access. No. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah, more like yeah it. good, good. <laughs> Makes it feel more authentic if we could when you cut, stuff it up. Cut in that fuck up, that'd be great. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and to add to that, this week's episode is also brought to you by HelloFresh. Oh, hello fresh. Hello fresh. You can solve that what's for dinner debate. <laughs> <laughs> hey? I know we're always bloody arguing over what we're gonna have for dinner. You can have it delivered to your door. We're gonna have a Sunday. You're gonna have a Sunday for dinner. When the three of us go, you know, when we have a bloody fight about it. We'll be like, I want Moroccan, I want Taiwanese, I want a burrito. Well, HelloFresh gives you Taiwanese Moroccan burritos. <laughs> well, I they, assume. What they actually give you is fresh food delivered straight to your door and already pretty much prepared for you. You just whip it together. That's bloody great. And you can try HelloFresh with 50% off your first two boxes using code GOON. 50% off your first two. I don't know if they know what GOON means. Boxed wine. <laughs> So check out HelloFresh uh, for 50% off using the code GOON. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and I'm here with Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. <laughs> Whoa! He looked at the wrong person at the wrong time. Huh? Because I don't even care who you are. <laughs> that was a joke just for us. Yeah, but Matt shared it with everyone. Oh, I love to share. Matt loves to get everyone involved. Yeah. Do that at one of our live shows. Point to the wrong person. That'll no, point be fun. To, point to someone in the front row. Jess Perkins. Yeah. And they're like, oh, me? I'm Jess, all right. And then they feel very sad because they realise they're Jess. And you feel really good because you're not you anymore. Yeah. The dream. <laughs> Sweet release. <laughs> the dream to be so. I'm this guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tell me I'm this guy. <laughs> Give me your wallet. I'm you now. <laughs> and then I've got his money. <gasps> Hopefully he has lots of it. I reckon. Oh. We have very wealthy clientele. Clientele, mm. we call them. Yeah. All well, right. So wealthy. Are we sex workers? Is well, that... could be. I mean, restaurants also have clientele, let's be honest. I think maybe, maybe most businesses. Clientele? Guys, yeah. Customers. Ma- that's right. Jess has never been in a business before. Oh, She's sorry. never used a clientele word. Okay, don't be patronising just because I'm new to business. Uh, patronising because oh, we have many patrons. Fuck. Another word for clientele. I can't get this right. I'll never be a businessman. <laughs> you got a great briefcase there. You look like you're well on your way. I'm wearing a power suit. It's hot in here. <laughs> in the power suit? Yeah. It's great that you <laughs> insist. You are bloody swimming it's in got it. got a little heater in it. <laughs> it seemed like a silly add-on purchase. I wonder why when you're the, ballooning out there. When the suit sails. <laughs> floating up to the ceiling. Oh, she's, you, she's full of helium. Do you want me to throw in a little suit heater? With your purchase, and I'll do your deal. And I said, um, yes, please. <laughs> um, is that even a question? Uh, I'm not an idiot. Give me two. I'm wearing two heaters. double heaters. Oh, no. I'm boiling. Well, you look fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. You look I, powerful. I, yeah. <laughs> it's because I'm literally radiating heat. Now, I've got a question for you, Matt. Oh, yes. Where are you right now in Australia? I was just checking that in my diary. <laughs> I know a lot of people check, like, uh, the map to know where they are, but I'm checking my calendar. A lot of people just look out the window. <laughs> Is today the 28th? I'm still in Adelaide. I'm in Adelaide for a couple more shows. So, people, if you're in Adelaide and you're listening today, you should come see my show. Pretty dry. No, that's last year's show. Dry Ginger Mail. Oh, Jesus. Fucking hell. How many nights have you been doing it so far and you can't remember the title? What's going on? A couple, I've been over in Adelaide for a couple of weeks now. And uh, next week I'm going to Brisbane. I'm going to be at the Powerhouse um, for Idiot. a couple of weeks. Brisbane, sorry. And uh, you can find out all about these shows at mattstuartcomedy.com slash gigs. I'll be in uh, Melbourne for a month after that at the Chinese Museum. Dave, you'll also be in Melbourne. Oh, yeah, I will be then, but I'm in Adelaide now. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm in Melbourne now and then and forever. <laughs> uh, I'm doing three blind dating show spectaculars. You know it's a great show when I put the word spectacular <laughs> in the title? <laughs> Got to sell it. Uh, on Monday nights at the Melbourne Town Hall, 
You get to see six comedians a show, dating a member of the audience through a curtain. It's very, very silly. Matt and Jess will be there, so come along. Super fun show. Thank you. It's the kind of show you could bring anyone to. If you're looking to take your folks and or your kids or cousins or just someone. A Tinder date. A Tinder date. A this Tinder is the show. A Tinder date would probably Perfect. be. Perfect. I'd love to have three generations there if someone <gasps> brought their kids and their parents. Yeah. That'd be great. Aww. I think that'll happen. I was about to say, I'll bring my parents. And then I realized I don't have kids, so I can't do that third one. Okay. Will bring your, their parents. Yeah, will your parents bring their kids? Ah. ah. Does that still count as three? Yeah. Great. Sick. I'll take it. That's perfect. <laughs> and we're also doing our show, the Do Go On uh, Spectacular. Extravaganza. Yeah. Yes, spectacularly extravaganzic. Yep. <laughs> uh, for all four Saturdays, is that right? Yeah, starting the- on... <laughs> March the 31st is 25th. the first one, which I believe is Easter Saturday. And we've got people, come, people have been telling us they're coming in from everywhere. We've got people coming in from overseas. To, one guy's coming over, I think, from America, and it's the first thing he's going to come to off the plane. Oh, dear. I love that. But what, actually, if you look at the, the shows that are already on sale, and not all of them are on sale, but a lot of them are at comedyfestival.com.au. A lot of people that do podcasts that, you, if you listen to a lot of Aussie podcasts, are doing live shows. So it's actually worth coming in from interstate or from overseas if you want to see us or the Dum Dum Club or Sans Pants. Sans Pants are doing it. The weekly Josh Earl's Planet. Doing... Uh, Josh Earl's doing six live. Don't you know who I am? So that's that's cool. going to be fucking that's rad. That's too many. He's doing. Well, he's doing some of the hi fi. Do you know? Oh, that? that's true. Yeah, we that's discussed that. Sick. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Anyway, enough plugging. Yeah, so anyway, come to the Comedy Festival and all the ticket links are in the description of this episode for my show, Matt's show, and our podcasts. Ooh. What do you say we do one of those podcasts? That'd be really good. That's what uh, that's what the people came here to God, listen to. Guys, I don't feel like it this week. No, fair enough. Let's keep plugging. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let's do something different. Plugging. Okay. All right, no, let's actually do a pod. Okay. Uh, if you haven't heard the show before because you've maybe liked the topic, what's happened here is I, Dave Warnicke, have picked this topic. Jess and Matt don't know what it's going to be about. It's been suggested by one of the listeners. And we always start with a question to get on to said topic. So my question is... I'm going to get it. You want to have, have a guess before he asks? Okay, yep. Jess, have a quote. Bananas. Okay, great. And you, Matt? Um, I'm not, thinking... Not saying the Jess history is wrong. of bananas. Not saying Jess is wrong. Okay. Farlap, the horse, and his and it's and it racing, horse horse racing. Mm, nice right. try. Remember that time I said banana logic because yeah. we recorded two episodes out of sync. No yeah. one ever said anything about it. At the end of one episode, Fuck, I, I go, enjoyed it though. I said something about, oh, how about that thing last week when I talked about uh, banana logic, and then we recorded the next one. I had to, and the whole episode, I'm waiting to go. All right, how do I've got to work banana logic in? And then you, Dave, was wrapping up. I'm like, oh, well, and, and what I, the other thing, this guy, BTK Killer, he's really got banana logic, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And no one even, no one messaged going, was Matt okay? <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. No. So what happened? <laughs> no I one cares was, if you're okay. Uh, I'd forgotten. <laughs> and then I just thought you'd lost it. And I thought Jess was laughing because you'd lost it. <laughs> and it was only when I re listened back to the other episode that I remember. Oh, that's the context. I just thought you'd just gone, oh, but I'm logic. I'm Matt. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm wacky. Whoa. Okay. Uh, question. My question. Uh, according to a traditional rhyme, we must remember, remember the 5th of November. I'm, I'm going to stick with my original answer. <laughs> Farlap. Race, horse, race. Horsey, horse race, Farlap. I literally said I'm going to get this question. And if you believe in yourself like I did... Dreams can come true. Tell me it's September. Tell me it's September. Me it's, oh, September. it's November. No. It's, November. It is. it's Remembrance Day, is it? Fuck it's November. It Thank is God. the 5th of November. Do you? Okay, Jess, do you know what we're remembering? Guy Fawkes Day. <laughs> Guy Fawkes Night. Night. Oh, They're very good. That's great. He's the guy from The Mask from uh, v Anonymous for, and yeah. V for Vendida. Vendida. That's that how we say it in our country. Uh, so the, the, the traditional rhyme is, remember, remember, the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason and plot. I know of no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Uh, this week's topic is the gunpowder plot. Great. Aww. I vaguely know about this. It's got to do with gunpowder. It's got to do with Guy Fawkes. It's got to do with plots. That is all you need to know. And also other things, but I don't want to give too much away. You don't know anything else, do you? What if I said the word... Foibled. 
It's got to be up there with one of my favourite words, well, by foibled. the way. That foibled. Sounds not, it's not quite a word, is it? Sounds a bit like... Foiled. 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 It sounds, foibled sounds like, again, we've recorded this out of order. And <laughs> next week, no, last week you talked about foibled. <laughs> you have to try and get that in somehow. <laughs> but no, Matt just can't talk. All right. Foiled and foibles. Foibles is something... It's like a flaw. Flaw. And what their flaw was that they were foiled, which is what got me to foibled. Let Dave do the report. I might just step out. Okay. Your biggest flaw and uh, something that you often face as a foible is not being able to say foibled. Yep. Okay, this topic was suggested by Stuart Alcock with his final golden hat suggestion. We've got a couple of those left. People that supported us a lot through Patreon. Thank you, Stuart Alcock. It's also been suggested, so it definitely goes out to you, but the topic has also been suggested, went back through the hat, by Barry Worthington and Callum McDonald. Both good names. But no, Stuart Alcock. So a bit of background on this topic. Now, we've got a whole episode devoted to him, but to put this all into context, we have to talk briefly about King Henry VIII. He loved fucking and beheading. Oh, Yeah. Uh, So, to sum this up really quickly, between 1533 and 1540, Henry took control of the English church from Rome and the Vatican, and by doing so, he started several decades of religious tension in England. Basically, he wanted an annulment of his 20-plus year marriage to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, and he wrote to the Pope and asked if he could have an annulment of the marriage, because Catherine was actually his brother's widow, and he shouldn't have married her in the first place, and it was against the Bible, and that's why God wasn't giving him the male heir he deserved. The Pope refused, so Henry said, fuck you, I'm making my own church, but I'm, I'm the boss and I say what happens. Wow. Did he did he write back, fuck you? Again, Jess, I did a whole report on this, episode 62. I don't listen. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Fuck you. Oh. To quote Henry VIII. Oh. You know the whole remember, remember the 5th of November? The problem with that is you, the bit you remember is the remember, remember bit. And then the rest could be anything. Remember, remember the 7th of September. Like, it still rhymes. Yeah. Remember, remember the 26th of August. Yeah, exactly. It could be anything. So, really, they could have been, they should have made it like us, November, November, mm. the 5th of November. <laughs> yeah. huh? Hey? Myth, Catchy? Myths, November, myths, November, <laughs> the 5th of November. Thank you. That's much better. Jazz is looking at me with respect <laughs> for the first time. First uh, time for everything. So to keep summarising here, Henry made himself the head of the Church of England, which these days like is... Like a Voltron sort of scenario. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So in summary, uh, he made himself the head of the Church of England, which these days is Anglican, which is a type of Protestantism. After Henry died, there was a lot of yo-yoing back and forth between a Protestant king or queen and a Catholic king or queen. And to varying degrees... To put it very basically, if the monarch was Protestant, the Catholics were persecuted, and if they were Catholic, the Protestants were victimised. So people would go through a generation where they're like, we're on top, and then another generation where they were being persecuted and it sort of went back and forth. Why can't we be friends? No, nah, they're totally Why different. Why can't cause, we be friends? Because the king recently said they were. It's, such, it's, uh, it's one of my favourite splits in a people. You know, like it just seems like such a minor thing. It, there are very, I was looking up the differences. It's ma- mostly the big things of the Pope. Catholics have the Pope. The Pro- Protestant people don't think that he's like the head of the church. Like the Archbishop of Canterbury, right? Oh, well, that's the head of the mo- the highest religious figure in the Church of England. That's right. right. And then uh, there's a difference between saints. Catholics pray to saints. Mm-hmm. In addition to God and Jesus, Protestants acknowledge saints but don't pray to them. Right. Oh, okay. Catholics have holy water. Uh, purgatory Pro- is for... Protestants Cath- have Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get those electrolytes. And um, another minor difference is communion. In uh, Catholicism, the bread and wine become the blood and body of Jesus Christ, meaning that Jesus is truly present. In Protestantism, it's more symbolic. Yeah. I mean, it's not actually his blood, is it? Well, no, in, in, that's you know what, what you're talking Catholicism. I know, but, but I think I'm, they kind of believe that it's... When I was there, I reckon that even the teachers were like, you know, it's a, we know it's a symbol. but Yeah, it's... I took it as symbolic, not... Uh, well, you took it as Protestant then. Wow. <laughs> you didn't I... realise. Oh, no. I've got to go back and apologise to my Catholic school educators. See, there you go. Go do reconciliation, please. Fuck. 
Reconciliation was the best. It's great. You got a lot of stuff worst. off your chest. Yeah, but also like you're nine when you do yeah. your first one. It was so really a, a lot of it was. Um, I spoke I back to my I, parents, yeah. and um, and then he just keeps looking at you and nodding, and you're like, "What do you want more?" I, um, I, I hit my brother because he made me angry. I didn't finish my porridge. Yeah, I one did, time. Do you start making up stuff? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so you do, because to. you're nine, you haven't sinned. I punched a priest. <laughs> you're born oh. a sinner, Jess. Oh, man. Anyway, let's get back to... I feel so guilt-free. It's great. I love it. Wait, what did you grow up? An Anglin? No, a nothing. <gasps> a heathen. Sorry. Heathen is the word I'm looking for. Well, I mean, I'm glad you're guilt-free now, but where's you being burnt to death in hell? No, you won't be burnt to death, will you? Burnt to life. Burnt to life. Thank you. Forget how it works. Uh, so basically, this is the summary of what has led up to these things. Henry VIII's only son, Edward VI, succeeded him. So he f- did finally have a son. Uh, and he was the first monarch to be raised Protestant. Before that, they were raised Catholic. But when he was found to be dying when he was just a teenager, he went to great lengths to make sure he wouldn't be replaced by a Catholic. Oh, wow. Mm. So he undercut his half sisters, Mary and Elizabeth, and instead had his first cousin, Lady Jane Grey, to replace him. She was also a teenager when she ascended the throne, and there's a reason she is known to history as the Nine Day Queen. Oh, oh, I've got a funny feeling. Because she was only on the throne for nine days before <gasps> oh. Mary had her arrested and ultimately executed. Yeah, it feels like you you don't want to be the one who cheats their way to the top for someone else. It's like you are gonna be killed soon. Yeah, rather than just living your life as a kind of royal person. It's a dog-eat-dog yeah. dog world. Wait your turn. I reckon... If you've got an opportunity to be the queen, you take it. Nah, for nine days. It's longer than I've been the queen of England. Yeah, me too. Really? Yeah. Huh. I think it was seven. Dave? Fifteen. Fuck! <laughs> God, so. he's good. So now Mary's, Mary the First is on the throne. She was a Catholic, and there's a reason she's known to history as Bloody Mary. <gasps> she loved Tabasco and fused cocktails. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And murdering Protestants. Oh. Uh, Mary was Henry VIII's oldest daughter and dedicated her life to try and reverse all the stuff her father had done with the church. Wow. So she tried to reconnect with the Vatican, make it all Catholic again. During her five-year reign, Mary had over 280 religious dissenters burned at the stake. Oh. Wow. So she was hardline anti-Protestant. But then Mary died and she was replaced by her half-sister and Henry VIII's other daughter, Elizabeth I. She's a big deal. Now, there's a reason she's known to history as the Virgin Queen. She loved cocktails but hated alcohol, so always had virgin Bloody Marys. Huh? Huh? I mean, it didn't need that last bit. I think we already got it, but... I did. And perhaps... (laughs) Perhaps that's why she remained a virgin throughout her spectacular 45-year reign. 40... 45. 45. Never had a dickin. So it goes... 45-year-old virgin. No, no, no. That's how long she was. She lived to be like into her 60s. Well, she, she's the second she's longest a serving Hang after on, Matt. Elizabeth II. No, I think it goes Elizabeth II, Queen Victoria. Oh, Queen Victoria. Virgin the whole time. Virgin the whole I'm time. I'm sure I dwelled on this a lot last time too. Sorry. Not judging. Yeah, but that's not. Just uh, curious. No one, is, that, is that something people actually believe? I'm pretty sure that they people believe she was a virgin. Yeah, right. She, she never had any heirs. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, you can use protection. Too. Yeah, you can. I don't think so. You can. Do, <laughs> I don't believe in it. You can do this yeah. without. There's other options. Making a baby. What are the options? Um, oh, put them on the can, table. Oh, I'm not going to put I'm them not, on the table. Yeah, I don't do want to do that. We have young listeners. I don't want to. I don't want to be a bad. Anyway. The things we talk about on this show. <laughs> if you're worried about this, about explaining how they can have safe sex, that's. <laughs> No, I wouldn't want I to ruin their the lives. Line. Wouldn't want to ruin their lives. Oh. Okay, so Elizabeth I, like you said, Matt, big deal. A uh, very famous queen. One of her first actions as queen was the establishment of an English Protestant church. So now it's back to Protestant. Right. Of which she became the supreme governor. Much like Henry. Supreme governor. <laughs> All right, supreme governor. <laughs> Shiny <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Get your paper. Buy your condom. <laughs> I don't believe in that. Uh, now this sw- fully swung back to Protestantism with uh, the monarch 
being the head of the church again. Because she had no kids, virgin, Catholics hoped that Elizabeth's successor would be her cousin Mary, Queen of Scots. She was the legitimate heir to the throne, but her career... F- and she's also very, very Catholic. But she's her- also only, funnily enough, the queen of people named Scott. Mm, which is pretty limiting. She also ha- she had- back then it wasn't as popular. She had at least three dozen subjects. Now she's got like ten in every fraternity house. Mm. So many Scots. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots. Big Catholic. Catholics are hoping that she'll be. She's a legitimate heir to she, the throne. What's her surname? She's not a. She's not one of mine, is she? She's not one of the Stuarts. Uh, yes, she is the father of father and mother of James Stewart. Bloody hell. Your name's James Stewart mm-hmm. with a Matthew at the front. Yep. Uh, I'm sad to report, Matt, that her career faltered when she had her head cut off for treason. Yeah, runs in the bloody family. It does. Headless yeah. chooks us all. You've got a head on right now. Yeah, well. It's hard to recover from that. Uh, Elizabeth knocked her off. She's the one who chopped her head off. Mm. Elizabeth eventually died in 1603 at the age of 69. Lol. Ironic for the virgin. Oh. Uh, She was succeeded by Mary, Queen of Scots' son, James, who had already been King James VI of Scotland for over 35 years at this point, and because of his English royal blood, was able to unify the English, Irish, and Scottish crowns and became King James I of England. And who better than to unite the three countries that a man historians now describe as crude and vulgar, who slobbered everywhere? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, what Runs is he? A bloody family. A bloody, a bloody Saint Bernard. <laughs> yes. Oh, that'd be a cute movie. There's a king, but he's a Saint Bernard. It's been done. Fuck. No, it probably hasn't. Oh, probably has. <laughs> yeah. Copyright. No one do it. King Bud. I reckon it would have happened. Oh, it's so cute. King Beethoven. Uh, so James I also was a, was a Protestant. So now you've had, finally had two kings and queens in a row that believe in the same stuff. So finally a bit of st- stability, I guess. Consistency, if anything, nothing else. But guess who was still unhappy with this? Catholics. <sighs> Interesting. Uh, this was despite the fact that James's attitude towards Catholics could be seen as more moderate than that of his predecessor, Elizabeth. Some would even call him tolerant. <laughs> After all, he was the son of the Catholic martyr, Mary Queen of Scots, and his wife, Anne of Denmark, had herself converted to Catholicism. Oh. So his mum's Catholic, wife's a Catholic. Wait, a wild he, time. He let his wife have her own yeah. choice. It's a wild time. <laughs> so she converted to Catholicism. What was what was the Danish fashion of the time, religion-wise? I imagine I have no idea. Oh, it's quite an imagination you have there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to go out on limb. <laughs> uh, yeah, because at, at you'd think it, for her to go different from her king husband, then maybe it was maybe fashionable in not that religion's fashionable. Maybe she was just agnostic. Fashionable. Oh, agnostic. And then decided to. It's like whatever, whatever's in this. Yeah, cool. This season, or maybe she just she saw. Maybe Catholic she tried God. a bit of everything. Yeah, it's a very confusing thing. It is. But it was basically because one guy wanted to get divorced. Is that kind of, that's simpl- simplified, that's what it is. Yeah, well, King Henry VIII wanting to get divorced has set in motion all these yeah. all these events. Fascinating. Uh, another reason that Catholics were pretty excited about King James I was he ab- appointed some Catholic sympathisers to important roles in his monarchy, which something Elizabeth never would have done. So this relaxation led to considerable growth in the number of visible Catholics. People no longer had to hide their Catholic sympathies. Still heaps of invisible ones, though. Yeah. <laughs> the, the invisible ones really thrived un, under yeah. this dog-eat-dog circumstances. Mm. You're talking about ghosts, Dave? <laughs> These are some, some invisible that Catholics. I prefer, I prefer the term, the politically correct term, invisible Catholics. That's a okay. new band name. The invisible Catholics? No, invisible Catholics. <laughs> Get rid of the... Oh, that's like the furious Wikipedia debate amongst people whether the the band Eagles is called Eagles or The Eagles. And yeah. people go back and forth, forth and add the, and people are really angry right. about it. Yeah, imagine <laughs> you just have to look at one of their albums and it yeah, should say. I'm pretty sure that even their albums are inconsistent. Wow, I love that. I love that about them. Okay, so people uh, are now publicly Catholic a bit more, but it wasn't enough. Many wanted a fully Catholic leader, and James wasn't as tolerant as some had hoped. Some people thought that he might be like... It's cool to be whatever. Yeah. But he wasn't that cool. He wasn't fully Catholic. He wasn't fully on board. So some members of the Catholic clergy decided that something had to be done. Uh Uh-oh. 
they developed two plots. <gasps> one is called the main plot. The oh. other one is called the by plot. <gasps> Pick one. What would you be a part of? Um, the by plot. Okay, Jess, you're in the main plot. Go like going oh. shopping. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint, but neither was successful. Fuck. The main plot was to get rid of the king and replace him with his cousin, Lady Arbella Stewart. Arbella. Oh, nice name. Pretty. Uh, this plot involved Sir Walter Raleigh, who I discussed in more detail on the Lost Colony of Roanoke, episode 102. Oh, gosh. This is, this is a real this shared a, universe episode. It's crazy, isn't it? He's a busy guy. Uh, because of his involvement in this plot, when it didn't go well, Raleigh was imprisoned in the Tower of London for 13 years. What? So that's pretty it's bad. Prime real estate. Imagine how much it cost to buy an apartment there now. What, for 13, 13 years rent for free? Amazing deal. Plus meals oh my god torture get it all uh, so that's the main plot it was discovered and ended uh early in the by plot was even worse that plan was for for two famous priests william watson and william clark the two willies famous priests uh, at the <laughs> what time, a time they plan to k- kidnap well i mean right now the pope i guess is the one isn't he he's the famous priest he's the famous priest yeah another great band name the famous priests sorry famous priests thank you uh, Willie and Willie, they planned to kidnap King James and hold him in the Tower of London until he agreed to be more tolerant towards Catholics, <laughs> which for me is very... Go on, come on. Dumb, like, like, you've imprisoned the king. What do you think that when he gets out he's going to just stay true to his word and not just, yeah. like, kill you? Well, that plan, too, was discovered early and the two Willies were executed. Oh, not they cut the willies off. Oh. And the uh, they probably did cut their they willies cho- off. Cho- chop the heads off the willies. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan actually backfired for Catholics because now uh, he didn't. My like- willies are burning at the stake, so they, just in case they killed him that way. Oh, covering all angles there. <laughs> no. Oh, my willies drowning to death <laughs> at the okay. stake. At the stake. Um, Can a willy drown? Oh, no, a firing squad is shooting my willies. <laughs> um, well, they've, um, hang, I've hanged my willy. My willy's hanging from that tree. Um, my willy's being electrocuted in a chair, both of them. Okay, I think that might be. I've had a lethal injection in my willies. <laughs> Got two willies. My willies are. Why will he's given a few lethal injections? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Said, said <laughs> Willie as he was dying. Dave. Oh, no, no good. No. Shouldn't be lethal. <laughs> Am I still doing it wrong? <laughs> he Look, doesn't know how to do it. You wouldn't put it on the table earlier. Oh, that's true. This is on me in a way. Yeah. This is my fault. Uh, so I wanted to say the plan had backfired spectacularly for the Catholics because they fucked up and then also now the king hates Catholics right? because they've, they're seen as a threat. Right. Uh, he publicly announced his utter detestation of Catholicism. Uh, within days, all priests and Jesu- uh, Jesuits had been expelled and recuancy fines reintroduced, and these are fines given to those who remain loyal to the Pope and who do not attend uh, Church of England services. Which is is actually uh, a requirement by law at this time. So if you don't go to church, you have to pay a massive fine. Wow! And he sort of lapsed that, so people didn't have to go to church. But now he's been threatened by the Catholics. He's like, "Fuck it, you're all going to church. You're paying. You're paying." Silly. So now James is pissed off at Catholics, and Catholics are really, really pissed off at James. Hmm. One such pissed off Catholic man was a man called Robert Catesby. Don't like it. He's very central to the story, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to say it a few more times. Catesby. Catesby. What are you? The Great Catesby. Okay. Oh. All right. I'm kind of back now. Back on. Okay. I've tried to read The Great Gatsby three times. Really? It's great. No. Nah, I can't get into it. Really interesting. I've really tried. How far do you reckon you get in? Oh, like maybe a chapter or two. Oh. Bored. West Egg and all those things? And Bored. Then? Have you seen the film? Nah. Oh, good, because I find that often ruins books. You start imagining Leonardo DiCaprio instead of Europe. Oh, I imagine him in any character anyway. <laughs> he plays all the characters in my mind books. Yeah? Oh. I have mind books. I'll try it. Keep talking about Catesby then. Uh, the great Catesby. The great Catesby. Uh, born in 1573, he was a direct descendant of William Catesby, 
a high-ranking counsellor of King Richard III and a character in the Shakespeare play of the same name. How cool would it be to be related to a Shakespearean character? What? Be pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, Robert Catesby's father, Sir William of Lapworth, was a proud Catholic man and one of the leaders of the Catholic cause. And throughout his childhood, Robert saw his father suffer greatly because of his strong faith. Robert was only eight years old when his father was arrested for the first time. And from then on, his father spent the rest of his life in and out of prison, mainly for refusing to go to the Protestant church. Uh, Robert himself entered Oxford, went to university in 1586, but left before getting his degree in order to avoid taking the oath of supremacy, which would have required him to publicly swear allegiance to the monarch as supreme governor of the Church of England. So basically, if he'd got up there and refused, he would have been in a lot of trouble, sort of avoid actually even being asked to do it. He dropped out of uni, didn't get his degree. In 1593, Robert married Catherine Lee, who was a Protestant. Kate Lee. Catherine Lee, okay. Uh, There was much speculation that he converted to Protestantism at the time, but reverted back to Catholicism upon his wife's death five years later. So, Which kind of blows my mind because he's like hardline, what you'd probably call an extremist today. Right. Yet he converted to the other side and then came back. He just loves the team game. I reckon that was with some of these some of these people. Like it, it sounds like the differences aren't that big. It's not like you're fully changing everything. You still believe in the same God. But so you're lo- just like you're you're loyal to your team, right? Your family and whatever. I think love will make you do wacky things. Mm. I think love will tear you apart. Again. Wow, you are bitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bitter from love. Who my, hurt you? My lethal injection. Who? Oh, okay. Wait, you injected yourself. No, I just can't love anything. Right. Anything I love dies. Oh, okay. But, Stop putting because your dick the, in everything because, you love. Well, oh, well, this apple. I love this apple. <laughs> that oh. house plant. That, I love I thought it. it was, yeah. That I donut. Loved it. Oh, that donut, very fortunate. <laughs> Fortunately, Didn't touch the sides. Did not, luckily, it was a big donut. <laughs> It was more of a bangle, a large bangle, bangle-shaped donut. Ed- edible bangle. Bangle-shaped donut. An edible bangle is a great idea. Another great band name. The Edible Bangles. Edible Bangles, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, so this is back to Catesby. Through right. his wife and grandmother, he inherited a great fortune. Oh. With his fortune, he was able to pay the large fines to not attend Protestant church. So he's shelling out just so he doesn't have to go to church. Wow. I would have done that as a kid. I'm a big, I said this at work today, I'm a big fan of paying for convenience. Mm. Okay. But even I would probably just go to church. Rather than, because most people, if you don't have enough money, if you're not wealthy, you can't afford to do this. Yeah. Right. You've got to be. It's expensive. It's very expensive. If it was like two bucks. I would never go. I think but you end like up going pay- there. They pass that hat around anyway, so you still probably end up putting a couple of bucks <laughs> sure. in there. Still and you're at church. <laughs> you know what? How I stopped going to church? My parents offered me a deal when I was about twelve. Mm. Um, if I joined the tennis team, which was a church tennis team, I think. Okay. Then I uh, the games were on at the same time as church, so I, I became a tennis player. Nice. I don't. What? what why were your parents I'm like? Not- you have to be. Tennis player is well. I think they were. I think maybe they realised that I, I, you know, I, I wasn't fully. I don't know. It's. I guess I. I should ask them about that. It's yeah. weird, right? You. You think you want to take me to church? It seems like a weird flip to then go or oh, tennis. Okay. Yeah. Question: Did they have to stop going to church and attend your tennis games instead? Oh, see, one might of be, them maybe did. See, it's sweet deal for them. Then they have to go yeah. to church every two weeks. No, but yeah, they. I thought they liked it. Oh, fuck. You thought wrong. Look, I really need it. I probably should be having this discussion with them. Let's call them now. In a way, I mean, do they listen to the podcast? So in a way, uh, no. you could be having the Certainly conversation not. with them if they supported you. They do not do that, no. Um, my brother and sister do. No, my sister does. Uh, anyway, <laughs> fuck you, Tom. Um, <laughs> yeah, fuck off, Tom. <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> the better looking Stuart. But no, mum. yeah, my mum teaches at a Catholic school still. And your dad still teaches at a tennis school. So. And, yeah, my dad's still a, a tennis. My dad's a tennis still ball. <laughs> still a tennis ball. <laughs> Bouncing about. Love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. <laughs> you bouncy fuck. <laughs> so, Casey is definitely in the mon- minority in people avoiding church. So, this time, most Catholics kept their beliefs private and went to a Protestant church just to avoid trouble, basically. It should Pussies. be noted. <laughs> Pardon? 
Pussies. Pussies. Just pick up a racket, mate. <laughs> Uh, it should be noted that during this era, England were at war with a uh, with the Catholic Spain, making the authorities even more suspicious of Catholics because they thought there might be double agents acting on behalf of Catholic Spain. Did, did any leave? I mean, you might not have gone down this rabbit hole, but did did many English Catholics leave to Catholic friendly countries like Italy and Spain or whatever? Yes, a famous person in this story. Ooh. I'll talk about left to fight for Spain. Right. Because he was a Catholic. A certain guy. Okay, well, now it down. So it <laughs> wasn't Mary woman. Queen of the Scots. <laughs> She's dead. And it sounds like this person was alive. And a guy. Yeah, I'm going to put a line through Mary Queen of Scots. But I'm not willing to rule anyone else in or out at this stage. Okay. We'll keep you posted. Thank you, Columbo. Uh, Catesby took a few risks. He was a trusty, uh, trusted member of the Catholic community and he even hid priests at his house, which, remember, they've all been banished. So that's a very risky crime for both him and the priests. I wonder where he hid them. Probably a priest cupboard. Yeah, you, you know the priest cupboard. It's strange that the authorities never checked the priest cupboard. Yeah, I know. It's right there on the sign and the door. It's priest labelled priest. Cupboard. And it says, like, occupied by a priest. Occupado, which is Spanish. It's is it? Occupado. Fuck. Idiot. What does what I say said mean? Nothing. Great. It's not a, it's not a word. <laughs> and and uh, what I've often found with Spanish speech, speakers, unless you get it 100% right, they look at you like, what the hell have you just said? <laughs> <laughs> you can miss out one little, like a, a whole sentence, you miss out one like word or like the, they're like, I'm so sorry. I, wanna, I, I do not I understand what you just said. I think in France I was on a tour... And we were going through the Bohemian area, and there was he was talking about like hipster type people there were known as bobos, right? Bohemian, and then someone else. A couple of like French words abbreviated to bobo, right? And he was talking about him for five minutes, the tour guide. And then I, this guy came past who looked just like how he described them, and I go, "Oh, is that a bobo?" And he said, "I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? So what are you talking about? I'm like that guy is he a bobo?" It's like, oh, you, uh, I have no idea. I'm embarrassed. Oh, hang on. You mean Bobo? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I think, Matt, what you did wrong there is that what you should have said was, is he a bubble? Yeah. No, really, it was something like a bubble. <laughs> it really was something like that. I wonder if that time you saw that priest. Wow. I just said to the priest, hipster, and then kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by many accounts, Catesby was a very popular man in his community, very charming and a great speaker. He got on well publicly with both Catholics and Protestants alike. And according to Britannia.com, he was considered one of the most dashing and courageous horsemen in the country. He was a horseman. Yes. And he was dashing. Which part was which? I hope he had the horse body. Because if you're all got man legs with a horse <laughs> head, that is a pretty crazy life. Mm. If you got a horse penis, that is a lethal injection. Jesus Have you seen Christ one of them drop? What is wrong with Have you? you seen one drop down? <laughs> no. I still remember. It was one of my earliest memories of seeing a horse. <laughs> what? Dick drop down. Where were you? I was at a horse paddock, and um, when they piss, they just they drop out of them. You ever seen that? And they're real big, <laughs> real big. Yeah, that's actually like you, the earth moves. Sounds like you haven't recovered. <laughs> wow, the earth moves. Yeah, I mean, you were also much smaller. I was a lot smaller. <laughs> And it was <laughs> like, holy moly. It was like there was like a, a like a child inside of the horse who just punched its way out oh my of its God. stomach. It's like, a, like a small penis-shaped child. <laughs> well, just the, just the forearm. So a small forearm-shaped penis child. <laughs> yes. So you're asking oh. me like it's not obviously clear. We've been talking for quite a while and we have not got to the topic. This is the topic. Well, it is and it isn't. Well... We haven't got to the plot part. Well, we've talked a bit about penises. <laughs> yeah. So, Dave, this is my way of saying I don't want to talk about penises anymore and I'd like okay. to get to the point. Okay, so Catesby, don't worry, he's the main He's the main player here. Don't worry about this. Catesby, horse dick. Horse dick, whatever you want to call him. Is he a horse dick? <laughs> yes. Wow. In 1601, Catesby was involved in the Essex Rebellion and uprising against Elizabeth I, the Protestant. The rebellion was a failure, however... 
uh, the wounded Catesby was captured and imprisoned at the Wood Street counter and fined 4,000 marks, which is equivalent to six million pounds. <gasps> what the fuck? Like over 10 million Australian dollars. Holy shit. Leading him to have to sell his manor. But don't worry. He had so much money, he still made income from his many estates. What the Imagine fuck? being able to find, t- t- this is what I'm talking about, like he's fined $10 million and, and he's still, he's like, whatever. Uh, then King James uh, became the king and things, well, James I became the king and things didn't get better as the Catholic, as the Catholics had all hoped, but they got worse. The <laughs> final straw for Catesby was when James seeked to bring in legislation that effectively made Catholics outlaw and unable to make money from their estates and unable to bequeath wills. Oh. So you die and then the monarchy gets your stuff, oh, not your family. brutal. Or, and you can't make money from your estates. Like I said, that's how he makes all his money. So he's like, something has to be done. Yes. Bequeath is a good word too, isn't it? Bequeath, mm. yeah. It's not to be confused with bequeath. Yes. Two very different words. You'd never want to bequeath. <laughs> <laughs> I am queef. That's queef as a state of mind, Dave. Bequeef. Oh, could you guys just bequeef? <laughs> Please do, do bequeef. <laughs> You regretted that straight away. <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys, just be queef, okay? Just live my life. Matt's more on board with the to- toilet humour this week than Jess. It's amazing. It's not toilet humour. I'm si- Well, since we switched uh, se- seats last week, I think it must be the chair. <laughs> now that I'm no longer the head of the table. Yeah, I'm the boss. Yeah, you're the respectable boss like I used to be. Okay, mate. <laughs> That's cute. David, do go on. Okay, Robert Catesby, something has to be done. So what he does, he he held a meeting between himself and four of his friends. <laughs> he held a bit. Something has to be done. Just to get I'm s- going to have a barbecue with my some, friends. Some stuff off his chest, you know? I like how you started that off with between himself, like just in case we thought he was holding a meeting without <laughs> himself there. <laughs> Guys, okay. I've uh, organised this meeting, but I will not be in attendance. <laughs> Possible? I've left out snacks for you. Change the world. Be queef. <laughs> <laughs> As I always say, be queef. There is a parallel universe somewhere where that is like the ruling party. That's how they sign off from everything. Be queef. Be queef. Uh, so himself and his friends having a meeting to discuss a plan that Catesby's thought up. On the 20th of May, 1604, they met the Duck and Drake. Fuck yes. What's a Drake again? It's a male duck, is it? Goose. I think a it's duck? a swan. Oh. No, it's, it is a duck. It is a duck. I'm sure of that now. Yeah. I'm sure of that now. No, I've thought about it. <laughs> Not have thought about it. Uh, a, a male duck, you are right. So I wanted to double check to make sure I was sure about it. Very cool. Uh, in attendance Never was. Never doubt me. I always doubt you. In attendance at the meeting was Catesby himself, mm. Thomas Winter. Ooh. But Wintour. They named, they named Winter after him. Did you know that? But his name's actually Wintour. Before like... that, it was Coldy. <laughs> Summer, autumn, spring, and coldy. <laughs> Which I kind of prefer, but... Mm. My favourite month is coldy. I mean, season. Also month. <laughs> January, February, March, April, coldy. <laughs> uh, Thomas Winter, a well-educated soldier who had international diplomacy skills that they hoped could help them in the long term. Would that give him diplomatic immunity? <gasps> exactly. Wow. He's also South African. Oh. Diplomatic uh, immunity. <laughs> no. 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 Another man at the table was Jack Wright, a noted swordsman and strong silent type. Thomas Percy. I was hoping the next one would be Jack Wrong. Sorry. Thomas Percy, that's still pretty good. He was their man on the inside. His cousin was the Earl of Northumberland and he would come and go at court Mm. with the king without suspicion because of his uh, wealthy and powerful cousin, as well as a fifth man by the name of Captain... Guido Fawkes. Guido. Also known as Guy Fawkes. Wow. I didn't know his name was Guido. That's a sick name. That's great, isn't it? Fawkes is cool too. He's a former school friend of Jack Wright, which Mm. is strange for me because I'm also a former school friend of a man named Jack Wright. I mean, they're very common names, both of them, Jack and Wright. But you put them together and you get an uncommon name. I've never said wow as many times as I have in the last hour. This is a real wow fest. (laughs) Jack Wright. Uh, but Guido, or Guy, is the most famous name in this story. 
Uh, Fawkes was a member of a prominent Yorkshire family and a convert to Catholicism. He had an adventurous spirit, and 10 years earlier, he had left Protestant England for the Netherlands, where he enlisted in the Catholic Spanish Army. He's the one I talked about before who left to fight for the Catholics. Oh, and in he the is a guy. Yeah, yes. makes sense now. You get it. Whilst on duty there, he won a reputation for great courage and cool determination. He won that reputation in a game of chess. Yes, I win this reputation. He cheated to get it. <laughs> what a cool dude. Uh, he had been recruited by Robert Catesby because the group agreed that they needed the help of a military man who would not be as readily recognisable as they were because he's been overseas for 10 years. It also helped that he was an expert with explosives. Stick a dynamite up the butt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, to get Forks, because he was overseas, they'd sent Thomas Winter, the diplomatic immunity man. Mm-hmm. How'd I go? First time I've ever tried it. No, no good. good. No, no good. Just, we just started strongish. I dropped off a little strong-ish? and yours was the worst How I've ever heard. Do you? But let me just ask you. Oh, no. <laughs> what if I was to say? Oh, fuck, here we go. My name is Michael Kane, and I have a diplomatic immunity. That was Michael Kane doing a South African what? accent. Yeah, it actually wasn't bad. That was pretty good. You want me back? Thank you. That was a character doing a character. That was Jack Wright by me. That was Jack, that was Jack all right by me. <laughs> all right, so good, so good, Matt. No, you won me back. <laughs> but you lost me, interestingly. And I hate myself. Mm. That hasn't changed too much. Hey, Dave. Sorry, do you mind if I just uh, interrupt you briefly now? Should I should I say queefly? You should say queefly. <laughs> I I much appreciate that. Uh, I, I just would love to just chat uh, briefly about HelloFresh. Okay. Are you familiar with these guys? I am familiar with these guys because these might be the amazing people that sent us a box of delicious fresh food and recipes to try out. Yeah. Is this the same or is this some sort of weird? Yeah, I, 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 I saw some of their um, internal files and some of the names they were going to go for were delicious box, uh, good, good box stuff, um, good things in a box. Wow, um, and I ended up with HelloFresh. I support that decision. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I do too. But what they do is they send out a bunch of ingredients, all delicious, all fresh. Yeah, I was surprised at, uh, pleasantly surprised, I should say, at how fresh everything was. That was, that was a talking point of my household. Bloody hell, you live a boring life. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come here and feel the Christmas of this lettuce. The Christmas of this lettuce, I said. And then I realised that they'd mispronounced the word crispness. Oh. But all your crispnesses had come at once. Yes. I told you I live a boring life. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, they, they come with a me- uh, like a, me- a menu. Well, I call them a menus, but uh, nearly everyone else in the world call them recipes. A recipe card. A yep. step-by-step thing where people that are even as uh, untalented in the kitchen as I, I could make a Portuguese chicken with potato and salad. I did it myself. I don't really believe you. I did it. <laughs> okay. No one died. Bloody hell. People were fed. It was very nice. And you two could do this. How, do, how can you do it? Well, if you go to HelloFresh.com and if you type in the code word GOON, G-O-O-N, you get 50% off your first two boxes. It's basically two for one. It's good I, stuff. I just realized that GOON is about having a delicious wine in a box. And in this case, it's a delicious fresh food. Did I say food? You did. It sounds like you've been having a lot of delicious GOON in a box. <laughs> I have. <laughs> anyway, that makes sense now. So thanks again for Hello to HelloFresh, HelloFresh.com, the code word Goon, G O O N. HelloFresh.com, code word Goon. Hey Dave, please do Goon on. Thank you. Uh, so they sent Thomas Winter, the diplomatic man, to get Guy Fawkes from the Netherlands, who, without any knowledge of the precise details of the plot, returned to England and joined them. He was just keen to be part of something. <laughs> He's like, guys, oh, remember me? <laughs> hey, I'm cool. Uh, whilst Thomas was there, he'd asked uh, Spain for help with the plan. But they refused, saying they'd already been at war with England for a long time. They just wanted peace now. Yeah. So they didn't want any part of this. So now the group was assembled. The big plan was revealed. They were going to blow up Parliament House, hoping to kill the king and destroy all of his government. We will destroy them. Pretty good plan. Stick a dynamite. You reckon the pretty good plan is to bl- just to blow up Parliament? Yeah. So it's, a, it's a great idea. It's a great thought bubble. It actually, it's a thought bubble, and Catesby <laughs> wasn't sure how to do it. He was like, all I know is I want to kill them all in one go. Then Guy Fawkes was like, well, I'm, a, I'm an 
an explosive guy. I can make this happen. But before that, he'd got all his friends together for a secret meeting to say, how about we kill them all? And that's all I've got. <laughs> That's all they had. But they agreed to his plan and they swore an oath of secrecy on a religious artifact. What was it? It was a Protestant Bible. Dick. <laughs> oh, okay. Two different takes. Yeah, I reckon I'm right. Uh, shortly afterwards, they leased a small house in the heart of Westminster. where So they're, still, they're trying to blow up the Houses of Parliament, which is still where Big Ben and stuff is today. Right. Along the Thames there. And though all those old buildings are still there as they are now? Yeah, well, th- that those buildings were. I mean, there's plenty of other buildings around it. Interesting. Yes. The same building's still there. Oh, hang on. No. <laughs> They've all been painstakingly rebuilt. God, he's good. He's so fucking sneaky, isn't he? God, you are good. Well done, you mate. You should go on Josh Earl's podcast with lying like that or deceit and question asking like that. You've heard his feelings. <laughs> I've seen you on Josh Earl's podcast. It's very funny. Remember that time we were all on there? Oh, yeah. I don't think Matt did any of that kind of questioning. No, I was, yeah, I think I lost uh, pretty convincingly. Anyway, so the, uh, they agreed to it. Shortly afterwards, they released, they uh, leased this small, uh, small house in the heart of Westminster, installing Fawkes as caretaker under the alias of John Johnson. Oh, come on. <laughs> Which is such a terrible made up name. If you're going to come up with a made up name, John John, that was honestly like, okay, what's Make your it- caretaker's name? John. Okay, surname? John. Sin. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't done yet. Nailed it. The seventh <gasps> the um. of Westminster Abbey, Downton. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Just call me John Johnston. <laughs> All right. Please, I'm humble. You've already changed your surname. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, Bowls oh, are forming. All my friends call me Johnston, even though my name's John Johnson. It's a little joke. Just call me Dwayne the John Johnson. <laughs> Dwayne the John Johnson. <laughs> Can you smell what the John is cooking? <laughs> I don't want to smell oh, what no. the John is cooking. No. And why is it cooking? Oh. Oh. I put the lid down. So good. Uh, John Johnson, such a good made-up name. Thomas Percy had secured a position as a royal bodyguard thanks to his mate, the Earl of Northumberland. He's the one with the connections. And he claimed that John Johnson was his servant, meaning that John was able to freely roam. Hang on, a bodyguard has a servant. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a ceremonial bodyguard. I don't think it was actually. It was more like, hey, this is my cousin. Can you give him a job? Sure, bodyguard. Yeah. Okay. He's in the posse, basically. Yeah. And, the, and the posse member has a servant. Yeah, the, and the servant, because he's part of the posse's members, or because he's the posse member's servant, he can roam around and no one's like, what are you doing here? Yeah, like I'm getting shoes from, <laughs> from my master. I'm Dwayne the John Johnson. <laughs> All right. All right. Can you smell what I'm cooking? <laughs> Why do people keep saying that? <laughs> uh, for the explosion, they needed a lot of gunpowder. And rich man Catesby had a house across the river, of course he fucking did, where they started stockpiling the explosives. The opening of Parliament, which is when they were going to hit when everyone's in attendance, the opening, uh, was postponed until the following year. So the group went to ground and didn't meet up for several months. But it Mole people. <laughs> they went to ground with the mole people. It's always the mole people. Mm. I, tell, I tell you every time, mole people. You actually do. This actually gave them a lot of time to plan, and when they regrouped, they started to dig a tunnel from the house that Guy Fawkes, John Johnson, is living in, towards the House of Lords. So actually, they're going to oh. go. They're going to go underneath. Whoa! I'm into this. Yeah, I'm. I'm like. And this. they are definitely mole people. They they are digging like mole people. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a gut feeling. Uh, due to fears of the plague, which was still killing off people during this period, the uh, what can't which plague? The black plague is coming in. It's uh, were there many plagues? Because there is the black plague, but then there's also the plague. But are they the same plague? Yes, yeah, the same. The black death, the plague, bubonic plague. It's all the same right. name for the same thing. And what happens is it comes around for a bit, kills a lot of people, sort of dies down, comes back for, for many hundreds of years. Really, we should do an episode about the plague. We should. Definitely in the hat. Is it? Yeah. Oh, sick. Uh, because yeah, uh, it is sick. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people were very sick. 
Jesus. Sorry if that's too soon. Too soon. Too soon. My great 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 grandfather's great 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 grandfather read a book about the plague and it is nasty stuff. Wow. What? It's like <laughs> I wowed that. I'm wowing everything today. It's like, what's the worst illness you've ever had? Um Have you ever had the flu? Swine flu, I had that once. Did you? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. You had swine flu? Yeah, but it was uh, probably... Does that a- mean you ate a pig or you became a pig? No. <laughs> or you fucked a pig? Yes. Whatever I was calling my penis before. Oh, Lethal and injection. you killed a pig. I, I killed a pig. <laughs> peg the pig. It's pegging for you his You actually life. had swine flu. You were yeah. pegged a pig? Yeah. <laughs> but it was like probably... A year after it was like the big one in the news, it wasn't as like it was more common. How is it different to regular flu? Oh, the doctor just said it was fine, swine flu, and you just blindly trusted the doctor. Well, yeah, you fucking swine flu. It's like name it someone else. Pig flu. <laughs> I'd call, make it flu. Bacon powder. <laughs> Oink flu. It just feels like why put. I mean, why are you putting on the pigs for starters? But it also makes people who get it feel to me. Like, you it's know, fine. you don't want to be anywhere near them. Like I'm some sort of pig boy. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So my best friends are pig boys. But, you know, not everyone's as tolerant as me. There you go. Anyway, the because- worst illness you ever had times it by like eight. That's the plague. Eight swines. Uh, because of the Black Death coming up, it actually delayed Parliament another six months, which halted the plan again. However, they were able to decide during this halting time that after they exploded the king, they would kidnap his daughter Elizabeth and then install her as the puppet queen, but really they'd be in charge behind the scenes telling her what to say. Okay. Like, Catholics are good, right? Catholics are good, right? They'll kidnap her. It's like what you said before. Once the monarch is free and by themselves. (laughs) There's not a lot of clever stuff going on in this story. Uh, They had to dig uh, slow. So guards weren't alerted on the grounds above, but eventually the plotter's tunnel reached the main foundations of the House of Lords. Wow. Then they brought the gunpowder in barrels from uh, Catesby's house across the river and then they put it into the tunnel. Then some news came in. Great news for the team, but bad news for the tunnel digging team because Thomas Percy was able to rent a vault that was directly under the House of Lords. <laughs> so the plotters decided they no longer needed to carry on with the tunnel plan. No. Oh. So some people have dug a, a tunnel every day for like nine months and then they didn't use it. Oh, that's uh, I'd be like, can we just use both? Like, yeah. come on, let's I also, need let's this. Let's fill the tunnel with explosives as well. Two bombs. Two bongs? Yes. Fuck yeah. 420, blaze it. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Uh, so instead, uh, Guy Fawkes started moving the barrels of gunpowder and kindling, kindling into the vault. He did this under the cover of nightfall, and once in the vault, he hid the barrels behind firewood. So if you went in there, it looks like there's a lot of wood stacked up. And how does firewood differ to wood? It's chopped, it's dry, it's ready to burn. Good stuff, Mm. Matt. Great definition. Mm. All this time in the Midlands of the country, an uprising was being planned for the aftermath of the explosion. The conspirators needed extra funds, and they enlisted wealthy Catholic Ambrose Rookwood. Yes. Holy fuck. That's good. Oh, my goodness. I know a dog <laughs> called Ambrose. Amb- really? That is a great name. Ambrose Rookwood. Holy fuck. I put that up there. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Matt, Matt. Whoa. Matty. <laughs> I'm buzzing. <laughs> I really should have put <laughs> his name second because the other name, what do you reckon about Francis Tresham. Yeah, it's fine. does sound a bit like one of our mispronunciations. Tresham. Tresham. Francis Tresham. Yeah, that sounds like something. Stephen. Who's actually... <laughs> yeah. I love Francis Tresham. Stephen. Uh, Kate, this is actually Catesby's cousin who was, uh, who'd come into a lot of money and they donated the money so he they could. came into a lot of money. <laughs> We've all wanted to come into a lot of money. And I have with a lethal injection. Oh, Dave. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ruining I'm everything. I'm going to call you lethal weapon. Okay. Don't call him lethal weapon. Call his Johnson. No. His, call his Dwayne the, the John Johnson. The John Johnson. <laughs> Uh, they used this money to buy weapons to be used after the explosions in the uprising. So they're sort of arming people in the Midlands so that they can also have a bit of a, you know, a revolt. Viva la revolution! Matt's favourite thing to yell at our live shows. Everything feels like it's going along great. This feels like it would be hard to fuck up. Just go and blow it up, 
Got the guns. Away we go. Okay, so Puppet you say queen. everything's going great. The head of the Jesuit mission in England, Father Henry Garnet, learned of the conspiracy through one of his subjects' confessional. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. Oh, no. You big supposed, dummies. Isn't there a bit of privacy there? Isn't there a, between the priest and God? But don't. Don't, don't tell the confess priest. Confess it. I mean, you... Oh. No. I guess one of the bad things of spreading the uprising, you're recruiting people, is that the more people that know, the more people that can leak it. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, that's their big mistake. So Father Henry, he hears about it in confessional. He's horrified by the planned revolt. He tr- he contacts Catesby, tries to convince him not to act, but he is ignored. So they're going to go ahead anyway. Meanwhile, the opening of Parliament's delayed yet another month. This would be so frustrating. It's been a He's long time. He's ready to go. He's ready to explode. No, they've got the, gu- the bloody gunpowder ready to rock. Finally, on November the 5th, Parliament is set to open. In attendance at this state opening, because it's the big ceremonial first day of Parliament, would be, as well as the monarch's nearest relatives and members of the Privy Council, there'd be, so the monarch himself, his family, senior judges of the English legal system, most of the Protestant aristocracy, the bishops of the Church of England, as well as the uh, members of the House of Lords and all the members of the House of Commons. So if they were all to die at once, the monarchy and the government would be thrown into complete chaos, which is what they want. John Goodman would end up as the king, I reckon. I reckon he'd rise through the ranks, yeah. the only one left. I think so. However, a couple of weeks before this, on October 26th, Francis Tresham, the man who is Robert Catesby's cousin that's donated money, well, his brother-in-law, Lord Monteagle... No. Good name. Good name. Lord Monteagle. Pretty good, yeah. He received an unsigned letter warning him not to attend the opening of Parliament on the, the 5th of November. Monteagle was one of the many Catholics who was loyal to the crown, and he, sh- he decides to show the letter to the king's chief minister, Robert Cecil. Ugh. One of Monteagle's servants alerted the plotters that they may have been found out by the letter. Now, at this point, you'd be thinking, okay, I'm going to bail on the idea. Everyone, yeah. the, the, the priest is talking, Monteagle's getting, getting a letter showing the king's advisors, but nope, Kate Spee decides to go ahead. Instead, he uh, bails up his cousin Francis Tresham, who he thinks has written this letter, and he confronts him and calls him a traitor. Tresham denies the allegations, although he does urge Catesby to now abandon the plot, which is a bit sus. Look, I wasn't the guy that tried to derail the plot, but you should derail the plot. Yeah, well, maybe now that everyone knows about it. Okay, it could just be common sense. Uh, So, in response to this, Catesby uh, decides to get Guy Fawkes to check on the cellar, where he finds that nothing has been moved. All... All the gunpowder still there. So if they really knew, they'd take the gunpowder out, surely. Mm. So the plotters think, in actual fact, they haven't been discovered at all. They can go ahead with the plan. So a couple of days, so it's due to open on November the 5th. On November the 1st, King James, he's shown the letter that Monteagle was sent. And in the letter, one of the lines says, They shall receive a terrible blow, this parliament, and yet they shall not see who hurts them. And the king suspects the phrase terrible blow hints at the use of gunpowder. Well, that's quite clever from the king. So he, orders- I'd be like, a really bad gobby is coming for <laughs> all of us. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's good. You call your dick a lethal injection all fucking day. Ca- I come on. I've been calling it that for several hours before we even hit record. <laughs> the double standards here, outrageous. Fine, I won't participate. I'll be no, here I'm happy for you no, to, ca- no, no. to tell our young listeners about a really bad gobby but not instruct them on how to engage Even in good gobby. <laughs> in consensual safe gobbies. Consensual? Yeah, you've got to keep it central. Not the way I So he's, he's suspicious about this terrible blow that's coming in. He thinks gunpowder, wrongly. The gobby is coming. He doesn't know. The gobby is coming. <laughs> Real unsatisfying gobby. <laughs> he reads the line, the gobby is coming. I think there's gunpowder hidden somewhere. <laughs> that, uh, is, he- that, that is smart, but it's not, I mean, it's not a huge leap, him figuring that out. It feels like the letter should have, could have been vaguer, right? Mm. Just like, it's going to be a bad day. Um, they're going to put a fart bomb. <laughs> no, don't say bomb. They're going to... F- Fart, yeah. fart powder. Collision. Fart. No, wait. Fart, fart, no. fart gunpowder. Fuck, no. Um, all right. There's gunpowder in the vault. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Um. Oh, uh, how do I cross this out? <laughs> this uh, pens, Pencils haven't been invented. <laughs> I'm not starting again. This parchment no. costs heaps. Yep. I've sent each of these letters. <laughs> 
I accidentally hit send. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cancel. Cancel. <laughs> is that going to be your outbox or is that sent? How do I know if it's been sent? All right, Delivered? now we're going to have to break in oh, no. to the computer room. <laughs> it, it says it's already been seen by the king. This is so far back that they used to have computer rooms. <laughs> oh, I just downloaded to a floppy disk. <laughs> do you reckon the queen has an email address? Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon it is? Yeah, okay. Queen at queen.org. <laughs> queen.org? No, queef at... No, what, what was the word for? <laughs> be queef. Be queef at queen.org. <laughs> be queen. That's what she says to herself every night before she goes to bed. Be queen and be queef. <laughs> I do say boop. <laughs> I, I, I declare this queef regal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I do say. Hey, sorry, Dave. Do you mind if I interrupt uh, very quickly? This is the last time. All right. Sorry, mate. I've been a real bloody pester pants over here, haven't I, today? Hey, I'm always butting in. Couldn't say it better myself, pester pants. <laughs> uh, I, um, I just wanted to interrupt briefly because uh, the other sponsor we have today, The Great Courses Plus. Yes, we're very excited to have The Great Courses Plus on board because it's an online educational tool. It's like you're med- an offline educational tool, Dave. So it's great for you to be paired. We come together with yeah. an off with an online educational tool. Like many of our listeners, I'm sure, learning doesn't have to stop at the end of school. You listen to this. Maybe you're interested in uh, historical stuff. The Great Courses Plus is an unlimited access to fascinating information from the world's top professors and experts in virtually any category. You got history there, science. You can learn a new language learn how to draw or how to take better photos. And there's thousands of video lectures and audio lectures with these professors and people that are at the top of their field telling you about these subjects. It's great. The course that we recommend that you start with is called Outsmart Yourself, Brain-Based Strategies to a Better You. So it's basically interesting, sometimes surprising insights from a neuroscience to improve your well-being. It's a 24-part series We've watched some of this series. It's very interesting stuff. You can improve your emotional intelligence. I didn't even know what that was before this, but now I do. I found out that I'm already very high uh, emotionally. Um, Not very intelligent, though. Um, But (laughs) I uh, I found the guy very soothing as well, which I enjoyed. I love watching a guy who knows what he's talking about, and he's also wearing mauve. I don't know if there's anything better than that. Just kick back and just let him flow over you. And he was from the University of... Of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. A place we'd love to visit one day. Penn State. Go, Pens. Uh, So you can sign up for the Great Courses Plus today to unlock this world of knowledge. And as a listener of our podcast, you get a full month of unlimited access to all these courses to enjoy all the lectures for free. But what you've got to do is go to this URL, thegreatcoursesplus.com slash go. G-O. The code word's getting smaller and smaller. No time to procrastinate. Just get... Just go. Act now. So that one more time. Start your free month. You'll love it. Sign up at thegreatcoursesplus.com slash go. Greatcoursesplus.com slash G-O. Uh, do go on, please, Dave. Thank you. Let's blow some shit up. Uh, so he <laughs> is, he thinks gunpowder. So the king orders an investigation and the king's privy council uh, talk about ways of searching the premises without warning the conspirators. All the while, Catesby is completely unaware and he decides to go ahead with the attack. They search the premises quietly and the vaults on November, on November the 4th and the search party spot a large amount of firewood in one of the cellars. They speak to the cellar's attendant, Mr. Dwayne the John Johnson, mm-hmm. and he coolly explains that the wood belongs to his master, the royal bodyguard Thomas Percy. And they're like, cool, we'll leave you to it, Mr. Johnson. And they leave. The king, who seems to be the only non-fuckwit in this story orders a second search at midnight, and this time they find John Johnson, a.k.a. Guy Fawkes, and this time he's in possession of fuses and matches. Uh Uh-oh. And this time they finally arrest him. Right. I would have just said, these fuses and matches belong to my royal bodyguard, Thomas Percy. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. they would have been like, cool. Peace. Bequeef. (laughs) As the king would say, bequeef. So he's finally arrested. The search party look more closely at the firewood in the cellar and they find 36 barrels filled with gunpowder. That's a lot of barrels. But also, ditch one or get four more. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Sorry, Jess. Fucking hell. How many? 
36. 36. No, that's a, that's a round number. Six sixes. Nine that fours. Could, that's a, that's a, that's in a nice uh, square, right? Nine fours, twelve threes. I don't mind the look of thirty six either. So, Eight, yeah, okay. I'll eighteen doubles. Okay, well, three I mean, dozens. You know, you're both talking math to me. Thirty six right? singles. Do you know that? Forty minus four. Do you understand what you're talking to me is like gibberish? <laughs> okay. How do I explain to you, Jess? The more bang, the more bang. Oh, that seems dumb enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not. I'm not so dumb that I didn't know that was an insult. <laughs> Do we go on with your dumb little report, fucko? Oh, I'm the dumb one. Yeah, I'm sorry, Justin. You heard her, fucko. Get on with the report. Sorry, Sass twins. <laughs> so he's he's arrested. Guy Fawkes is taken to the king himself, but insists that his name is John Johnson. That he has no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we know you're John Johnson, but you've been caught with explosives. No, I'm John Johnson. Yeah, okay, we we okay, we all agree your name is John Johnson. No, but my real name is John Johnson. It's not a fake name. Okay, right. no one ever it's, said anything about fine. it being fake. <laughs> no one ever said fake. We're asking about the matches. You're making me feel your name might be fake. John Johnson is not a fake name. Why do you keep saying that it's not a fake name? It's not. John Johnson? The Rock. My name is not Guy Fawkes. Okay. Oh, no, not The Rock. The John. Oh, God. Oh, is your name The Rock? No. Okay, I'm very confused. I'm John the John Johnson. <laughs> I thought you were Dwayne the John Johnson five minutes ago. No, five minutes ago you were Dwayne the John Johnston. Oh, it's all unraveling. Oh, dear. I'm real. I'm a real boy. Look, we never so said you weren't a boy. <laughs> so this guy's so famous he's remembered there are masks of, of his head and the thing he did was not explode a place or does he break out and do something here is, this me... the, is there more oh, no, I'm gonna keep sizzle going. in this steak let him keep going oh, so at point. this point he's saying I'm Dwayne the John Johnson I've got no idea I don't want you talking I don't know who you are the king I don't know who the king is the king gives the men permission to use torture to pry information out of forks King James says and they used forks <laughs> they prodded at him with forks don't make, make me use the fork oh not the fork you started with the spoon you graduate to a fork. That's how it happens. Then it's a splayed. Use uh, a spoon. It's duller, you idiot. <laughs> It'll hurt more. Hit him in the nipple with a spoon. In the nipple? Yeah. Okay. The King, uh, King James says, The gentler torches are to be used first unto him, and so by degrees proceeding to the worst, and so God speed your good work. So basically, start out light, and if he's not saying anything, you can get Build real. up to the nipple spoon. Yeah, nipples are finished. With, I, for my final trick, the nipple spoon. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> All right, I'm not John Johnson. <laughs> Just make it stop. <laughs> um, upon hearing of Fork's arrest, most of the plotters in London, including Thomas Winter and Thomas Percy, the two Toms, fled uh, the city to Dunchurch in Warwickshire. The plotters escaped from London uh, for the Midlands, which is this area. Rookwood was the fastest, covering 30 miles in two hours on a single horse, which is a considerable achievement. Why is the marital status of the horse so important? <laughs> I was picturing a guy going <laughs> faster, like, with his legs over two horses. <laughs> <laughs> he did only one horse. <laughs> Everyone, if you get nine, there's nine horsepower. It's way faster. <laughs> I didn't consider how dumb that sounded. <laughs> and he did it on one horse. Well, he did it on two married horses. <laughs> they were married to each other, interestingly enough. Oh, shit. See, I thought I'd got a great joke in there. <laughs> he just came in and fucked my joke. It's all good. Uh, they moved across the Midlands where they'd planned the uprising. They, wanted, they were like, all right, the bomb hasn't gone off. <laughs> They're like the bomb hasn't gone off. Let's do the, let's do the uprising. <laughs> so Matt's still laughing, and he never laughs at anything. He's dead inside. <laughs> he is dead inside. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just a lot of good horse stuff there, <laughs> and your your laugh is I'm sorry. infectious, Jess. <laughs> Sorry, it's like the bubonic plague. Uh, so the bomb hasn't gone off, but they decide to have the uprising in the Midlands anyway. Uh, but that comes to nothing, of course, so they're on their own. Uh, the plotters 
seized horses from Warwick and attempted to kidnap Princess Elizabeth anyway. Right. But she's whisked away to safety well before they get to her. So it's all falling apart. Uh, Catesby, with nowhere to go, decides to make a last stand in the Midlands and uh, persuades the key plotters to join him. And when it rains, it pours, and everything starts to go wrong for the men. The gunpowder they had with them was damp from the pouring rain I mentioned, and they decided to dry it by the fire. (laughs) You know, like you do with explosive materials when they get wet. (laughs) Of course, it explodes, and John Grant, one of Thomas Winter's Winter's cousin, is completely blinded. Uh, The house is then completely surrounded by over 200 men, and Catesby, Percy, and Wright all die in a gunfight. Oh. The others are wounded but survive and are rounded up and taken to the Tower of London for some interrogation. That doesn't sound fun. Yeah, then, I imagine you probably would have preferred to die, right? Yeah, then it's either death or the nipple spoon. Oh, my oh. God, nothing worse than the nipple spoon. <laughs> 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 well, cut back to... <laughs> Meanwhile, Guy Fox is able to cope with torture for four days. Oh. Wow. But he finally cracks on November the 9th, giving a full account of what happened. He signs his confession and historians have compared his normal signature to that of his post-torture signature and it's clear he could barely even hold a pen. Oh, shit. So they fucked him up. And he had no nipples left. Oh, he tried to sign with his nipples. He started with six nipples, which is a weird thing he had. <laughs> he spoon- was a pig man. They spooned over six nipples. Six he had swine flu, obviously, which gives you multi-nipples. Mm, He's Dave. in multi-nipple mode. I've spooned mine off. Uh, Thomas Winter also ga- uh, gave a full confession after being interrogated in the tower, and now the king knows exactly who was involved. The eight surviving members uh, in the end were put on trial at what was essentially a, sh- a show trial at Westminster Hall, the very place they'd intended to blow up. They are all found guilty and uh, are told their punishment, the traditional punishment for traitors, hanging, drawing and quartering. Oh, that's not good. Which, if you're not familiar at home, they would be hanged until half dead. Mm. So choked until you're sort of nearly out, upon which their genitals would be cut off. Oh fuck! I didn't know what that—that's what that meant. Which and then that is that being? I thought you had a picture. And then what's the? It would oh, so drawn. Yeah, they means gen- chopping off your cock. And then it would be burnt in front of you. They throw it in a fire. Is that for real? Still alive at this point. Their bowels and heart would be removed, also burned. Obviously, you're dead when the heart goes. Finally, uh, you're uh, decapitated and dismembered. Their body parts cut in four, either being publicly displayed or eaten by birds. Holy fuck. That's wild. It's real nasty. So when people... Because that's that's used hyperbolically and um, hyperbolically. 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 It's used a lot. It's it's used... It's used hyper... Hyperbolically? Hyperbolically. Fuck. So today you hear it, people going, been bloody hung, drawn and quartered by the press, and it means there's been a, an article about them that's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> their genitals haven't been cut off and thrown into a fire. No, and their intestines haven't been removed and burnt. Oh, Holy shit. That's, that's gross. It's real bad. Four of the men were executed in this way on January 30th. Four the next day, including Fawkes, who was able to avoid his fate in part when he either fell or jumped from the gallows ladder and died as a result of a broken neck. Oh, smart. So he didn't have to do the choking. So good. The cock removing all the disemboweling. Well played. How do they cut your dick off if you're a woman? <sighs> First they attach one and then they remove it. Oh. Quite a painful surgery. Mm. Sometimes uh, it doesn't take <laughs> and, you know, there's multiple cocks that have to be tried and... Uh, in a court of law, and then uh, mm, mm. it's a it's a long process. You don't want to be there, Jess. I don't. Hyperbolically speaking, of course. Mm, of course. Hyperbolically, that was a buddy. That was a real trick there, wasn't it? <laughs> As I'm sure you can imagine, after this, things only got worse for Catholics. New laws were passed, presenting them from practicing law, serving as officers in the army or navy, or voting in local or parliamentary elections. Furthermore, as a community, they would be blackened for the rest of the century and even blamed for the Great Fire of London. Catholics weren't allowed to vote until 1829 after this. Wow. So this is 1605. Shit. And now I'm sure you've all heard of Guy Fawkes Night, which is funny that it's not called Robert Catesby Night because he was the man yeah. in charge of it. It's just because Fawkes was the one who was found. And he signed the... The big confession. Yeah, confession. Interesting. Uh, so Guy Fawkes Night, this tradition stems back to the night Fawkes was arrested, celebrating the fact that King James had survived the attempt on his life, 
people lit bonfires around London, and months later, the introduction of the observance of the 5th of November Act enforced an annual public day of thanksgiving for the plot's failure. And these days, the event is commemorated every year with fireworks and burning effigies of Guy Fawkes on a bonfire. Really? Yeah, it's kind of weird, brutal. isn't it? And that is All the- they try to do is kill the king. And every and one the king else. loves. Huh. And that is the story of the failed gunpowder plot. I actually knew none of that, other than the name. I, didn't, well, I also I'd, found I didn't know much. I did, I'd never heard of Robert Catesby, and I feel like he should no. be yeah, the I'd one that's heard. remembered. But I did. I, I knew. I knew that it, it came to a real uh, disappointing end, if from the the um, plotter's point of view, anyway. Yeah, totally. Yeah, they I um think. didn't really. So, but that was King James. That was my great, 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 great. Um, Mm. Friend uh, King James the first in theory, yeah. So, but it's funny because I, I was still barracking for them to win that. You were, yeah. I was still, I was still hoping they'd get blown up because it sounded sorry. like they were kind of assholes. And if they pulled it off, it would have been probably the most daring sort of assassination attempt of all. Because it's not just you need know, you when they take out just the leader, mm. which is crazy enough. Yeah, there's so many attempts that fail. They would have killed the leader, his whole family, all the high ranking politicians. Yeah. It sounds princes. like their biggest uh, problems were that they told too many people and that they got unlucky with the thing being held off and held off. You know, it's fun. I say I'm, I'm barracking for it. Obviously, I'm not supporting terrorism like that, Dave. Just to clarify. Your- just to clarify. I think I just, whenever, you, whenever you're doing a report from someone's perspective, I can't help but uh, barrack for them. That's because Dave's such a compelling storyteller. He's a great storyteller. Thank you. And thank you to everyone that suggested that, especially Stuart Alcock, one of our... Golden Hat Life Members. Bequeef with you. Bequeef. Stuart. Guys, bequeef. There's only one thing left to do on this episode, and that is to thank you for downloading it in the first place and to thank everyone that supports the show at patreon.com slash dogoonpod. Everyone that supports us over there gives us one, two, five, ten bucks a month chipping in. If you love the show, it is it really keeps us going. And uh, you can get rewards in exchange like bonus episodes and a shout out which we'd like to do now to some of the Patreon people. Jess, have you got some people you'd like to thank? I would love to. Um, and I think we should give them all fake names. Okay. Like Guy Fawkes had John oh, Johnson. Like so terrible fake names. Yeah, bad fake names. Okay. Are we okay with that? Yes. Okay. Well, I would like to thank um, from Williamstown here in Melbourne, I'd like to thank Ruben Maskell. Ah. Could be Maskell. Maskell. That's Double a great name. Ruben ah, Maskell is what, what if his fake name is Ruben Maskell? Ooh. That would be a terrible fake name. <laughs> Same spelling, different pronunciation. Yeah. That's his alias. That's his alias. Are you, is that your final answer? Ruben Maskell or Maskell. Depending. He's, he's got mask in his name, so he's already hiding something. Yeah. What are you hiding, Ruben? Let us know. <laughs> Sucked in, Ruben. You fell for the oldest trick in the book. If you did, let us know then. Yeah. Delete that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I press send. I've already well, read, it. read it. I've read, read it. You're going to have to come, you're hack into our computer room and delete it. Yeah, the Ruben do go on scale. computer room. I was on Williamstown Beach the other night. What a lovely spot, Reuben. You live in a real nice town, the affluent West. Beautiful. What a world we live in where there's an affluent West now. I know, it's affluence everywhere. Anyone else you'd like to thank, Jess? Yes. I would also like to thank from Devon, Christopher Day Carey. Ah, Christopher Day Carey. I think that. Um, Guy Fawkes is probably is a much bigger deal in England. Mm. Yeah. So I wonder if you knew all of that, Day Carey. So his name is Christian Day Carey. Christopher. Christopher, pardon me. Day Carey. I kind of want to say like Night Susan. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I think that's really good. Yeah. First name? Night. <laughs> Night, Night Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Sir, Sir Knight Susan. And is Knight the first one with a K? Sir Knight, Knight Susan? No. Okay. <laughs> Two Knights. Love it. Sir so Knight, Knight Susan from Devon. Knight, Knight Susan. Knight, Knight. <laughs> Knight, Knight. <laughs> Sleep tight. Oh, Knight, Knight. Susan. <laughs> Knight, Knight Susan. Knight, Knight. It's real satisfying. Hey, um, would you guys mind if I thank? From Cambridge. <gasps> also another bloody uh, English... And probably, he, he probably didn't get to the end of this episode either because he knew it all like the back of his hand. Mr. Stephen Bat. <gasps> Bat with two T's. Two T's. He's a real, Stephen with a V, his fake name. 
Stephen the PH, bat with one D. Okay, Dave, you're not really putting a lot of effort into these I'm, fake names. I'm thinking um, uh, Charlie Charger. Oh, that's good. Charlie Charger. Charger. I, I reckon a good fake name is uh, got alliteration going. On. Yeah, because you've gone Charlie Charger. Charlie Charger. Choo-choo. Bat Battery Charger. Oh, Charlie Charger. Very good. Charlie Charger from Cambridge. Cambridge. I love it. I love it. I'd also love to thank, thanks so much, um, Charlie Charger, a.k.a. Stephen Bat. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'd also love to thank from Somerset. Oh, we Summer love. Sat. It's our favorite one to do. Somerset. Is Summer that even Sat. right? Mid Somerset murders. Somerset. Summer uh, Ellie Nicholas. She got no Nick. Nicholas. Uh, and I would like to call her. What if I think of a first name? You think of a last name? Oh, great. Christina. Cropplecrock. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Your name is Christina Cropplecrock. That is correct, sir. I'm from Summerside. Dash. <laughs> Cropple Croc. Cropple Croc. That's good stuff. Christina Cropple Croc. Oh, no, but she can't be from Somerset. That'll give the game away. you got to give her a fake city She's as well. She's from Cheshire. Cheshire. <laughs> yeah, but good. said in a Somerset accent, Somerset. so they know immediately she's lying. They know. They know. <laughs> from Cheshire. I would like to thank from Homestead in Florida, possibly already a fake name here, Aaron Land. Oh, that's great. Aaron Land. Aaron Land. A- A-E-R-I-N. Jess, Aaron Land. I'll give you the first name. Yep, I've got the last name locked and loaded. Jess. Ocean. <laughs> that's great. That's badass. That's that's super, fake, though. Yeah, superstar name. Frank Ocean's. Jess Ocean, Aaron Land. It's your new name. These people go into witness protection now and they're already sorted. Done. You probably don't get to pick your own name, do you? Why not? I love picking names. Yeah, you probably maybe you can. I'm so good at it from all those years of playing The Sims. Thank you, Jess Ocean. Aaron Land. I would like to thank finally, and this is very cool because I don't often get people from here being thanked at the end of the show, all the way from Hong Kong. Ooh. Nickel, which is technically closer than Florida, but still seems rare as, as a Patreon supporter. Yeah. Carmen Lai. Oh. Carmen Lai. Carmen Lai. Carmen Sounds Lai. like an instruction. Come and lie with me. Oh, that's nice. But what fake name are you going to say? Jess, this is all you. Give me a first name, Dave. Terence. Truth. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's, that's good. a good lie. Mm. I feel like I'm going, no. a bit, I'm going a bit too obvious by just doing opposites. No, but Terence Truth worked because you didn't know I was going to say Terence. I didn't. No, oh, weird. was Ocean the opposite of something? Land. Land, great. Okay. Oh, why is it you picked? It was. It was real, it was real obvious. I got it. Also, Terence, I picked because that's the opposite of Carmen, obviously. Obviously. I know. So. I get your logic. Thank you. <laughs> Banana logic. <laughs> Call back to that episode that Matt. Uh, Dash. Dash. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks so much for everyone that supports the show at patreon.com slash do go on pod. You can uh, pledge there anytime. We always appreciate it. And you can get in contact at any time on email, do go on pod at gmail.com. And it's at do go on pod on all the social media. So reach out, say hi. Put a suggestion in the hat. The link is in the description of this episode. If you want us to talk about something that you think is cool. And or a- not cool. Oh, yeah. Fascinating would be great. Yeah. We'd love to hear about someone who, who um, completed a task, though, for once. Yeah, bloody fool. <laughs> hey? Bloody. Yeah. An actual plant. John Johnson. Come on, Johnson. Like John f- failed and had his dick cut off. No, he didn't, though. He didn't. I reckon they, they're, they're so spiteful they probably would have cut it off, but even though it was dead. Yeah, right. They just want an excuse. Anyway, uh, as we always say at the end of the show, uh, be what? queef. <laughs> be queef. Queef be with you. Queef and also queef. And say hi to your queef. Yeah. <laughs> For me. God bless our queef. That'll do us. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Later. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. It's not optional. You have to do it. (laughs) We used to go easy on it, but now you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you fucking... That's karma. Karma, 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 karma. Go fuck yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's gone into the end. (laughs) Who was she talking to? You'll never know. I don't know. They'll have a funny feeling, I reckon.